Hello to all of our viewers out there today and welcome to another exciting topic where we are covering charter schools as a community hub, an extension of the school building. And I am Dr. Helen Griffith, inaugural executive director of the Price School UC San Diego. And I have two outstanding guests with me today that are gonna share with us the amazing work that charter schools are doing to enhance the work with the community. I wanna start off by allow, allowing our guests to introduce themselves. And I'll start off with Alicia Smith, and then we'll go on to Dr. Ward. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Griffin, for allowing me to be on the same platform with two educational giants. So I am humbled and honored to be here. I have been the principal of Holly Drive Leadership Academy for the past 21 years. Um, I serve the highest percentage of African-American students in San Diego County where we are a provision two school where 100% of the students receive free and reduced lunch. And most of my staff have been with me for 20 years. So we are committed to the community we serve. Awesome. Well, welcome today. We're looking forward to having more conversation to hear about the exciting work that you're doing at Holly. All Thank right, you. Dr. Ward, share with our audience a little bit about you and who you are. All right. So just really quickly, I have been at E3. I'm the CEO. Uh, here at E3. I've been here five years. I'm following Dr. Griffith's footsteps. She Very was a well. CEO prior to me, and I actually came in uh, working with her as her chief of academics. Uh, and we also worked together at San Diego State, where I am now a professor emerita. But at the time, I was uh, Dr. Griffith's dissertation chair. Um, so I've been a professor at San Diego State, a tenured professor for over 11 years. Prior to that, I, and while there, I coached principals up and down the state of California. Prior to that, I was a supervisor of schools in the Long Beach Unified School District, a principal in the Long Beach Unified School District, a vice principal in the Long Beach Unified School District. Prior to that, I was in LAUSD, Los Angeles Unified School District, where I started my career as a math teacher and a dean of scholar support, student support. And then prior to that, I was a software engineer for NASA Jet Propulsion Lab working on the Venus uh, Magellan Project, which was a spacecraft to Venus. So kind of all over uh, when it comes to um, education in many different districts and having the opportunity to work uh, in a school and also in uh, aerospace industry prior to that. Great, so we bring a lot of excitement and experience to the table today to talk about this work with our charter schools as a community engagement. Now we're in COVID, obviously we've been <laughs> locked in since March the 13th at 4.05 p.m. I remember the day, I'm sure you all remember the hour as well as we've been educating our scholars from within. But let's talk a little bit about before we were in COVID, the work that we were doing to engage our community. Um, well, Lisa, we'll start with you and talking about what your school was doing before COVID as a part of community engagement. So, Prior to community engage, engagement or even going into um, before COVID, Holly Drive Leadership Academy has always seen the community as a resource. We believe that gold and silver are precious metals and resources, but human resources are the most precious resource. So we have had so many community partnerships from um, the Natural History Museum, the Science Museum, and um, we've gotten a chance to take the kids to Sacramento to see the Capitol and tour uh, Sacramento. We've also take the kids every single year to San Juan Capistrano on the train. And so often the kids will tell us that's the first time they've ever experienced a train or a plane. Um, we go to the San Diego Zoo and the Safari Park. And so we believe by allowing the kids to go out into the community, it just broadens their vision for the community and also for them to see all the things they could be doing outside of their communities. So we just see the, and also we have so many partners that actually push in to our school, the Museum of Photographic Arts, where we've had kids win community-wide programs and have their pieces displayed in the museum. Um, last year, we've had two winners. Um, so there, you can actually go to Belbo Park and see their piece in the museum. We've also had students win the Black Essay Contest throughout San Diego County. Um, last year, we had uh, a sweep. So they had six winners and seats second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth went to students at Holly Drive. 
um, in the first place when it was an 11th grader, I think, at Mission Bay. So we were able to compete with high schoolers, and we are a K through 8 school. Um, our school was actually started by John Walton from Walmart in 1999. And so we have a beautiful relationship with Walmart. And um, so we, we believe that the kids need to see that they're part of the community and that the school is part of the community and we need each other so very much. Awesome, that's really awesome. Dr. Ward, I know we look at the community as worldwide and global and I know you've done some work in partnership with the Confucius Institute and your scholars are actually traveling out of the country. Could you talk a little bit about how you partnered with global partners to bring that global community to E3 Civic High? Yes, so thank you, uh, Dr. Griffith. So part of the thing, part of our uh, mission, of course, is to prepare kids to be uh, ready for college, workforce, and life. But in the global arena as well, that's one of our pillars to be globally engaged. And so uh, right before the pandemic, our kiddos went to China as actually ambassadors, design thinking ambassadors, to a school of, would you believe, 34,000 kids, right? And this was in uh, Southern China. The name escapes me right now, but our kids went there with uh, a, a group of scholars from around the world as design thinking uh, ambassadors to teach their kids about design thinking and to work on a project that could be done in a couple of weeks. So our kids actually go to China every year. We visit Xiaomen, we go to the university there, and then we go to other uh, uh, cities and provinces throughout the uh, country of China. Uh, we, we also do other trips. We, we do uh, Spain, uh, Mexico, and these are more study abroad opportunities. We work closely with Young Zhao, who is also a person known for creativity and what the 21st education should look like. And so we partner with him. Actually, our work as ambassadors was with one of his schools in China as well. And then you mentioned the Confucius Institute. We work very closely with the Confucius Institute, meaning that we also have visitors here. They come from various parts of China. We have scholars, students that come as exchange students. They might be with us for a couple of weeks, uh, a couple of days, but um, that aspect of it we do as well. And, and then I do wanna mention some of our local partners because you know we are in the library, Dr. Griffith, and yes. you started the partnership with the library and we continue that partnership. We are fortunate enough to be able to use everything in the beautiful downtown library. So the Shiley Center that people spend thousands of dollars on for weddings, we get to use for free uh, because we are part of the library. We are in serious partnership with them. The beautiful auditorium uh, and every aspect of the library, the uh, 1 million plus books, are available to our scholars here at E3. So they are our primary partner. Um, we also partner with San Diego City College, of course, for our concurrent courses. And I'm, I'm gonna talk more about how we're gonna work with them in the future uh, a little later. But we partner with the City of San Diego, UCSD, USD for design thinking. We are known nationally for our work in design thinking. We work with Project Invent, which is also a national uh, institution. And last year we took first place uh, with design thinking at the national level, beating out kids from Cupertino, Google, Apple, uh, Microsoft, kids from Seattle, Washington, New York, and DC. So our work in design thinking is very serious and it also leads us into supporting the community the homeless in the community through our work with design thinking. Those are just a few of our uh, community partners. I, I think I'll stop there in the interest of time. Oh, this is great. This is really good information. And I know our listeners are really being enlightened in terms of what our schools are able to accomplish. I was excited to have also participated in the, a, the American Bridge to China in terms of studying there. And of course, speaking when the uh, Chinese educators will come to E3. So I'm glad to hear that that work is still continuing and expanding. Let's talk a little bit about those pillars in terms of prepare, preparation for college, career, and life. What are, what are both of your schools doing in terms of engaging our scholars to be ready for life? Life skills that you're partnering with other organizations. Talk a little bit about that, Alicia. So I presently serve students in grades K through eight. So naturally, um, the way that our school is designed is a little different than high school. Um, because our students are new to formal education. 
But we do have a lot of programs where we are getting them ready, high school ready and college bound. We have UCSD Thought STEM, where kids are able to learn how to make web design and do a lot of just learning how to use PowerPoint and some of the things you're gonna need just to even access some of the higher level programs in high school. We also um, have some life skill classes. We do a men's day class where we have some people in the community, some local entrepreneurs who come out and teach the guys about um, electricity, about plumbing, about owning your own business. And they teach the boys and the girls how to change their own tire. Okay. And yeah, so you actually bring a car in and the kids get a chance to change the tire. We also have a program called Girl Talk, where um, a lot of our middle school girls will learn about puberty and their own self and about just self-esteem and loving yourself. Um, learn about the changes that are going on with your body and things like that. We also teach them etiquette. And once they take the course, they'll learn table setting, ballroom dancing, and then they get a chance to go to a hotel and have lunch. And so they'll get a chance to use their table setting. And they also get to go to a professional fashion show with New Path, which um, is ran by Gretchen Bergman, who does um, just a program where we help people who are on a new path for sobriety. When um, we also do um, programs alongside with um, internships, we've done internships at the Malcolm X Library where kids can learn just about how to work. Um, just having the attitude when you go to work to show up on time. And we always teach them that on time means 15 minutes early. Right. If, you're already, if you're on time, you're late. So that's drum line. Times, <laughs> exactly. So we're just trying to teach kids to get ready for high school. So when we pass the baton, to people like you um, and, and, and Dr. Ward, we get a chance to, that we've sent you kids ready for high yes. school. We appreciate that. Thank you, yes. <laughs> and it's a little different because our kids are starting, you know, their education on Chrome, a lot of our kindergartners. So their first right. experience has been on Chrome and it's been tough, but you know, they're very resilient and a lot of our kids are rising to the occasion. So we're really excited about the results. Wait, and we're going to come back to that in a minute to talk about how you've maintained those connections, even in light of COVID. Dr. Ward, talk a little bit about, I know at the high school level, you've taken it to another level because they are ready to pass that baton out into the, uh, the world of secondary education and the world of college and career. What are you doing at E3 to bridge that gap, to build the skills, to make sure they are ready for, you know, cradle to career? So we, we talk about a viable path forward. And what we look forward to is a, uh, a viable career. We have the five graduate profiles, as you are aware of, civically engaged, globally engaged, career competitive, uh, literacy communicator, and creative and innovative. And we take all of those very seriously in terms of how we prepare our kids for the future. So um, we start when they enter uh, the ninth grade here where we shut down in the fall and all of the kids go on a college tour day. The whole school shuts down. Um, and some of our kids go as far north as UC Santa Barbara, uh, but they visit two universities or university and a college um, from here to UCSB. Then in uh, December, we have career speaker series week where we have folks from across the county actually that come in and speak with our kids. Then we have job shadow day where we shut down again and all of our kids go out for a job shadow um, somewhere throughout the county of San Diego. Our seniors participate in year long internships or two semester long internships. And we partner with about 350 businesses here in San Diego so that each senior has an opportunity to participate in an internship of his or her passion, choice, something to get them ready for the future. Um, we also have our kiddos participate in concurrent enrollment. We believe that while you're in high school, you should be getting those college units. We have the Python courses, uh, we have sociology and, and a few others from UCSD. And then we have concurrent enrollment at the same time with City College. And so the goal is that by the time our seniors graduate, they have four classes or 12 or uh, twelve units under their belt. 
um, ready and also the experience of success so that they know they are not imposters, but that they actually belong in the university and they know how to be successful at the university level. So that's another component that we ensure that they have. Now, as they prepare for their internships, we spend time teaching them how to write resumes. And then we have mock interviews. And then we have them come up with their elevator uh, speech. They actually do the phone calls to the companies for their interviews uh, for those jobs, even though we have already done all of the back end work. So those are some of the things that we do. And I'll come back to design thinking again, because design thinking really teaches them how to solve complex problems. And we've got five phases to design thinking, discovery, interpretation, ideation, uh, uh, experimentation, and iteration. And so you take a complex problem locally, globally, and you solve it. And what that does for kids is to, to let them know it, it empowers them, right? One of our uh, E's, uh, engage, educate, and empower. So they are empowered then to solve complex problems and know that there is no problem too difficult for them to solve in life. Phenomenal. I know viewers are impressed with the work that you two are doing and the work that's going on in terms of public charter schools. And these are just, these are not isolated schools. There are many other charter schools who are doing this deep work and understanding that we have an opportunity to innovate and engage and be creative in ways that can really prepare our scholars for this future we can't accurately predict. And so I'm just energized by hearing everything that's going on. Let's talk a little bit about how we've managed some of the challenges of being in the COVID environment. Um, Principal Smith, you talked a lot about creating that culture of connectedness, even though your, your scholars are offsite. Tell us about some of the things that you've been doing, your contest, the things that you've been doing to engage scholars to make them feel that we're still all in this together. We're still together. I think um, one of the things that I wanted to say is the kids that I serve fight an enormous amount of inequalities. And honestly, they, it just wears them out. And so when we look at this pandemic, we, we look at it as being so many things, a health pandemic, a racial pandemic, a financial pandemic, a digital divide pandemic. And soon, if we don't seize the moment, it will be a learning loss pandemic. And so for us, we felt like we wanted to have something that was a little stable, especially because we deal with such young children. It may be easier at the high school level for kids to in the high school to transition to almost all online learning because they're used to using you know, all the online platforms. But when you're dealing with five, six, seven year olds who need a lot of help logging on, a lot of help using the programs, we needed to have something a little more stable. And so what we decided to do was to print material so our teachers are on site every two weeks where the kids and their families drive through and they pick up materials, they pick up printed work, the materials they need for them to be successful on Zoom. And also a lot of our parents are essential workers. So if they have to drop their kids off somewhere, they can take their folder and still finish the printed work. Not all of our work is 100% online. So we're not counting on connectivity if that is an issue because it is an issue in our community. Um, and also a lot of times they have to be watched by grandparents that may not have the devices they need during the day. So therefore just bring your folder and you'll be fine. And then also it gives us a chance to do wellness checks. When they drive by, we actually physically see the kids and we wave to them and they're super happy to see us. Um, we also do a thing called Instagram Live, which is really fun because the kids will log on to Instagram Live and we do all kind of trivia questions, fun trivia questions, and the whole school logs on. And then if you get the questions right, we show up to your door with Krispy Kreme donuts, with McDonald's, Ooh. and the kids are super happy, more to see us than the food. Right. You would think they'd be more happy about the donut, but they're I just would think super so. happy. <laughs> and so they're just happy to just still be connected with us. And I think that's been the highlight of what we've been able to do during this time to let them know we're still a school, we're still together. I do a lot of Where Is Miss Smith videos, especially in the beginning of the pandemic when a lot of us weren't able to even go outside. I would go to different locations and then they'd have to solve clues with teams to figure out where I am in San Diego. And then if you got, if you figured out where I was, you'd win prizes. So we have to think a little bit more about the health and wellness of the kids in right. grades K through eight. Um, just because school culture means so much to them. My school is a classroom without walls. So 90% of the time we're out on location. There's a bus in our parking lot before COVID 
every single week and we were somewhere else visiting, learning, exploring. So for them to have no more food, fellowship, fun, field trips and friends, mm-hmm. it's it's a whole it's a whole nother environment. We're trying to keep that going for them to let them know we're still here and school is still fun to boost morale and maybe lower the uh, the suicide rates of young people as well mm-hmm. as the I guess we could call it virtual truancies. A lot of kids just not showing up to Zoom. So we want them to know it's still a place that's fun. We're still there. And when learning is fun, people are engaged. Wait, you I bring up a very to, good point. Go ahead. No, I also wanted to just say when she, she struck some, some thoughts in me, um, Dr. Ward did when she talked about the kids for the 21st century and moving forward. We actually have a thing our eighth graders do called presentation of learning where they have to create their own resume, biographies, awesome. and then they have a folder ready for them to take to high school and present everything they learned that year and show that they're ready to go on to high school. Wow, good point. That's like I said, we appreciate you at the high school level because presentations of learning are definitely a part of our, 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 our DNA, right? Yes. So, so speaking of DNA, we, we talk a lot about mental health and wellness and how that is really paramount. It was paramount prior to COVID and of course it's paramount now. Uh, maybe uh, Dr. Ward, we could start with you and talking about some of the things that you've done prior to COVID and what you've done after in this in this pandemic now to address the mental health and wellness needs of, of your learning community. All right. Well, we have a licensed marriage family therapist on our campus and uh, we have our community has access to either him or our two interns from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and eight to one on Saturday. Uh, So that's number one. Number two, before the pandemic, we met every scholar on the ground. Myself, well, we're on the sixth and seventh floors of the library, that's why I say on the ground. But myself and our LMFT met them on the ground every morning to look them in the eye just to figure out where they were starting the day. And if they did not appear to be in that right space, uh, depending on the degree up to that, we either sent them up and called them Uh, out of class later in the day to talk to them, or he immediately went up with them right away. So right out at the very beginning, we want to know the kids are okay, which is also why they're on camera every day, because we need to see them and make that eye contact with them throughout the day. And as E3 being a, a, a school of the future and a tech school, we closed on that Friday, opened on that Monday uh, with full online instruction and also having our mental health component in place. So we partner with the uh, many organizations throughout the city. We, on our website, we have a wellness page under our student uh, life and kids and parents can go to that page. We have something called, we, we partner with 211. And if you, you have, need any kind of help, you go to 211.org, you type in whatever it is that you need in the city of San Diego and they provide that support. Uh, There are other organizations such as HSSA, Mental Health Hotline as well, that they can tie into, and then the Access and Crisis Hotline. And so any of those will give families the support that they need immediately. And that's in addition to us on campus. We also this year, through design thinking and the the work of our seniors, started something called EduGuide. And that teaches our kids how to balance their own mental health. And that's a program that we use, uh, again, through our design thinking projects. I meet with the kids online every other week, and we have a mental health and wellness component with mindfulness there. We do mindfulness throughout the day with our kids, obviously, especially in this space. We did it before, but we do it a little bit more now that we're in the, um, the Zoom world. Right. And then we have time in the middle of the day for them to shut down and do other activities. Our LMFT meets with parents every Saturday. He has a parent collaborative where he meets with families um, and then he meets with individual families after the parent collaborative as well. So mental health is something that we pay a a great deal of attention to. Uh, We believe that mental health wellness leads to academic wellness. Absolutely. Definitely tied in. I love to hear that we're breaking down some of the barriers in communities of color and understanding that we must attend to our mental health and wellness 
that is an essential part of our success. And especially in communities of color, black and brown communities where we haven't really addressed that until now. And so it's great to see charter schools moving in that direction to enhance that work. Principal Smith, is there anything that you're doing in that area that you'd like to share with our viewers today? It's interesting because we do have, of course, have wellness pages on our website, but we've been called the masters of teacher efficacy at our school. Right. And it was a name that we were given by the community. It's not a name we gave ourselves. And I think it has a lot to do with, I allow the teachers to have and make fun part of the school day, connect with kids, dance against kids, you know, have fun with them, play with them so that they know that we're part of their family. And I think one of the biggest things that has happened is most of my staff stay and yeah. we're a stable part of their lives. Mm. Um, my, myself and the vice principal have been there since the school opened in 1999. And so the kids come back and not only we've been there so long that the kids that are at our school, their parents went to our school. So okay. now we're seeing kids that we educated, <laughs> bring their kids back to us. And so um, I think we do wellness check-ins every week. We also have extracurricular programs in the afternoons, and we try to limit the amount of Zoom time because the kids are just checked out of Zoom. Even if it's a fun program, they're, they're, they're starting to get burned out. So we try to limit the amount of Zoom academic classes in the morning to have dance class on Fridays, and we have PE classes on Thursdays and Wednesdays and an arts class, and we have... Um, uh, we have gardening and we have a let's bake class where we give the kids the materials and we can bake cookies together at the same time. We provide all the supplies and ingredients and you just come on Zoom and I teach you how to make cookies or baking. Um, we made little pizzas one time and we all just made a video together of our pizzas. So it just helps them want to be involved, especially if they have the materials to do it at home. And it's not just you watching me like a YouTube channel. You're engaged with me and get a chance to do things hands-on, especially when you're dealing with such young kids. Well, I'm going to put my address in the chat because I definitely want to bake the cookies with you Yay. next time. <laughs> I'm a cookie lover. Yay. So talk, talking about engagement in the family, I, I know Dr. Ward, and I believe you also, Principal Smith, you do some outstanding work around home visitations and you have a protocol, some protocols in place that are kind of school-wide that many charter schools do, but sometimes we don't get those opportunities in our district public schools. Let's talk about some protocols around home visitation. We'll start with you, Dr. Ward, and, and the work that's happened at E3. Well, all of our kiddos, when they enter E3, the first thing that we do is a home visit. So this year we did a Zoom home visit, but prior to this and hopefully back in the future, we actually visit the home of every new scholar uh, to E3. And we do that in the summer before they actually start so that we get to learn about the families, about the cultures. And we are a culturally proficient school. So we spend a lot of time uh, understanding those that we serve, our own implicit biases and how that might affect them. And uh, the more we know about them, the more relevant our instruction can be uh, to tie in the greatness the brilliance that they bring, that their families bring. So those home visits are really important to start the school year out. And then throughout the year, cultural proficiency is a major component. And then every month we meet with at least one grade level uh, where we do uh, sharing back and forth. We, we share information about what they need to know for that grade level and the ensuing grade levels and also information that we might need from them. We have our student-led conferences, of course, where our kiddos share what they've been learning, uh, how they've been learning it, the barriers that they may have uh, experienced. And then we talk about next steps together. How can we address those barriers? Um, we also have opportunities, obviously, uh, the parent principal uh, coffee with the principal where we just talk about whatever, whatever it is they want to talk about. And of course we have, uh, topics as well, but, um, those are some opportunities to really get to know the community. Of course, the home visits being the most important. And I, and I'll say that although I, we do the home visits at the beginning of the year, we do home visits every single week, right? And it just depends on the needs of our kiddos, but we are in the community. Um, we even used to go pick up a kid from home every single day to make sure he got out, out of bed, get yourself together, now let's go. 
Um, so we're really serious about working with our families. That's a critical, critical part of, of the work that we do. Principal Smith, did you want to comment on any of the work that you all do around home visits and getting out into the community? Yeah, we definitely out in the community, um, at community events. Um, our vice principal is a walk-on coach for Lincoln. So he's out in the community. He also does a lot of work with Jackie Robinson YMCA. We run a Dr. Jam program. He's part of that where boys get a chance to learn about male mentorship, mentorship and get a chance to have a mentor that is African-American and help them guide them all the way through high school, help them with just their homework, SATs, uh, how to get ready for college. But we do more of a thing called family visits more than home visits. We don't want to be um, invasive if people are against that. We want them to know that we're an ally and we're not coming into your home to, um, to report on anything, our goal is to see how we can serve. So if a parent wants us to come to the house, naturally we come to the house or we'll have a, the first visit at the school, student-led conferences, and just let them know that we just wanna know how we can serve. We wanna use our platform to serve you. So we've, and it's been such a beautiful partnership. Most of the parents we grew up with, most I went to high school with. So <laughs> it, most of them know us, we all know each other very well. So it, it definitely um, helps them to know I'm a kin's redeemer, I'm, I'm kin to them. So right. when they need to say something about what they're going through, I grew up in that neighborhood as well. So I definitely know the challenges that they face and have resources that I can provide. And I think they feel like that's a safe place. Yeah, you bring up a good point. In terms of the visit, it is a place where the playing field is leveled, where educators are at equal footing with parents when you make that visit. I know at E3, we actually didn't meet at the home if they didn't want to, it was a coffee shop or somewhere else just, just to let them know we're equal partners here. And we want to know how we can best serve your child. And we all, I remember at E3, we would take a swag bag where they would get right. a water bottle, a journal, <laughs> do a little chocolate in there because that makes everybody happy. Just to let them know we're here for you and it's a community partnership. So as we close today, if you like, ladies would like to share with our viewers your final thoughts on how we can really use our schools, our charter schools, our public charter schools as that community bridge, that community hub. Well, I think just when we were talking about engaging the community, I think it's so important that we um, perhaps even have a tent set out in the community and parking lots of maybe Target or Walmart or businesses that we shop at or even our schools. And San Diego Unified has all these buses parked in their parking lot that they're not using right now. And maybe we can have a bus equipped Wi-Fi and just park the bus in the middle of the parking lot and have Chromebooks out there, tents set up so that people who don't have more than one device at home, or maybe they have the device at home and don't have connectivity, don't know how to use the device, um, don't have an environment that's conducive to learn, they can come out to the site and we would have teachers on site to help you log in or engage. So I think it's we if we are still going to stay in this environment, maybe we could use the community and use their parking lots and say, we can just put a mobile device out there, some kind of a hotspot, use the buses to do it, and then just let people be outside and be safe and come on out and do it. Sounds awesome. Sounds awesome. Dr. Ward, your, your thoughts around the community and continue to engage moving forward in some of your ideas as we close. Well, you know, we uh, are reimagining education right now. So we are in constant meetings around what education should look like. <clears throat> and Dr. Griffith, you mentioned that we cannot yet determine what the future is going to be, but we know it's going to be different. And so there are a few things that our kids need to know how to do. Communicate well, collaborate with each other, uh, to be critical thinkers, to be creative, and to be culturally competent because the world is getting smaller. <clears throat> so at E3, we're really spending a lot of time with the community writ large, uh, working with our city college partners to figure out what are the uh, jobs coming down the pipe that our kids need to understand and know. And we're also teaching our teachers what those jobs are, right? So we're gonna be spending four days really understanding the workforce, the workforce jobs, so that our teachers know what they are preparing 
our kiddos for. And we're also going to be sharing that information with our parents. Uh, one, because we want them to know, but also if there are job opportunities available to them now, we want to make sure that they have those opportunities. Um, and so that's just a little bit about what we're doing, but it's really about reimagining education. We're working with the uh, Workforce Partnership here in San Diego. We're working with the Downtown uh, uh, Partnership uh, to get some of our kiddos mentors from the various businesses in addition to the internships that they're doing, again, to get that mindset around what is the future? What does 2030 hold for us? And how do we start preparing for that? today. I also Absolutely. Just wanted, Go ahead. I just want to jump in there real quick and say you, you jogged my memory on something because our eighth graders right now are working on trying to have a conversation with San Diego's Mayor Todd Gloria to talk about what would we need to do to maybe have a broadband or connectivity relief act where technology and connectivity should not be a luxury. It should be a right, especially as we move into even going back to in-person education you know, when 53 million kids left schools when we started COVID and 18 million had no devices or connectivity, that's a disservice even before COVID. And COVID has shown us that it's a disservice. And now we can't go back to saying, let's give us our devices back and you go back to having nothing. We need to say, how do we make this something that we start to level the playing field going forward? How do we do this? And so we're trying to have the kids do all the talking points. How do you get a relief act or how do you even get an act passed? And so right now that's what we're working on to make sure that connectivity is never an issue going forward if we ever have to move back in this space again. Her kids will be ready for uh, E3 then. That's they right. They'll be ready. ready. And, and, and the price school. You have I, have to play. Play. I, I do represent another school right. here, so I have to steal a few myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. But ladies, you know it has been right. an awesome conversation talking about what our public charter schools are doing, especially the work that you're doing, the three of us are doing to really make some transformation, to close the inequity gaps that COVID has so much shined a light on around economics, health disparities, of course, the educational inequities and every inequity that we see now, we have an opportunity to make a transformation. So I wanna to continue to encourage you, to encourage all of our viewers to tear down the walls, to make a smooth transition. No longer can education be a silo where we're individuals doing our own thing, we must band together, break down the walls and extend the classroom, the school day, the school building to incorporate all of the stakeholders so that we might make a generation of change makers. So thank you for watching us today. We'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you.